Hello, this is Mrs. Trombley, and we are now starting chapter 13, which is all about exponents. We're actually going to talk a bit about scientific notation towards the end, but that involves exponents too. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the basics, a few different vocabulary words, so that you know what the directions are asking you for when presented with directions. A power is the product of repeated factors. The base is the common factor being repeatedly multiplied. The exponent is a number of times the base is used as a factor. So what does all that mean? Well, first off, we're going to use this. This is 3 to the fifth power. This whole entire expression right here, this is referred to as a power. So the whole entire thing all together, this is a power. At each individual part, this 3, that's the base. Yes, I have a song in my head. I'm sure you know what it is. And this little 5 right here is called the exponent. So again, the entire expression, 3 to the 5th power, that is written as a power. So the directions say, write each expression as a power. I'm asking you to write it as a base and an exponent. When I say base, I'm referring to the large number. It's the factor that's being repeatedly multiplied. And when I say exponent, it's that little teeny tiny number that tells me how many times I have this. So what this means right here, this 3 to the 5th power, it means I am taking the factor 3 5 times. So the exponent tells me how many 3's to multiply. Alright, so the first thing I want you to be able to do is just rewrite an expression as a power. To write an expression using exponents, all you need to do is rewrite the base. So you just bring over the base, because yes, it's all about the base. I know, I can't help it. And then, here it is going to tell me the number of times that base appears, and that will be your little teeny tiny number, aka exponent. It doesn't like to be called teeny tiny number, so always call it exponent. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Alright, so rewriting this again, I don't want you to evaluate it, I just want you to rewrite it. So I'm going to rewrite this negative 7. And I'm going to rewrite it with the parentheses because that's how it starts. And you've already learned that when you're raising a negative base to a power, those exponents make a difference. So the base is negative 7. The quantity is negative 7. The number of times I have it is 3. That's all I'm asking you to do with this set. All right, in the next one over, the base I am repeatedly multiplying is 1. And the number of ones that I have is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is the same as 1 to the 6th power. Next, yes, letters. It's okay to have letters. They can be factors because x represents something. So x is my base. It's the factor that I'm repeatedly multiplying. And how many x's do we have? One, two, three, four, five x's. Shameful. All right, scooch it. Now, this one's a little bit different because there are two different factors. I have this one-fifth two times. And I have 4 3 times. It's all multiplication, so you can use exponents to express repeated multiplication. So when you see this 1 fifth twice, that's exactly what we have. We have, we have 1 fifth twice, so that would be 1 fifth to the second power. And this is all multiplication going on, so I'm going to put my multiplication sign. And we have the quantity of negative 4, 1, 2, 3 times. So another way to write this full expression here is just like that. Okay, now moving on to just some letters now. Again, I have a whole bunch of A's and a whole bunch of B's. It's all multiplication. And one more time, this exponential expression stuff only works when you are repeatedly multiplying. It doesn't work when you have addition. We are not allowed to do that. And I'm sure we'll explore that further in class. But this is only working for multiplication. So right now, I have four A's being multiplied. So that would be A to the fourth power. And I'm multiplying that by two B's. So that would be B squared. You don't actually have to have the multiplication sign there, but most people would have it. And what I mean is you could actually write a to the fourth b squared, just like that. Um, and I'm going to have you put it in parentheses, maybe off to the side, so you remember, oh yeah, that means the same thing. When you have letters next to each other like that, it means multiplication. All right, last one of these before we get to the back. That little symbol there, it's not my JT initials, I know. You, it gets exciting to have that on your paper. This is pi. And pi represents an amount also. And you are multiplying pi three times. So I can just rewrite that. Oh, my pen is given out of me. There we go. I can rewrite that as pi to the third power. 
and that's being multiplied by r to the third power. You have three of each going on. So when I ask you to rewrite each expression as a power, or rewrite each expression using exponents, look for the base that's repeatedly multiplied, list that base, and as an exponent, tell me how many times. All right, now we're going to move on to evaluating exponential expressions. So now we're not rewriting them. We're actually figuring out how much they're worth because that's what evaluate means. So turn your page. And yes, evaluate means to solve, to find the value of. That's why the word evaluate, that word values in there. And you do need to remember that order of operations applies to everything in math. Even if I don't tell you to remember order of operations, you still have to remember it. And just a little review of what order of operations says. It says that number one, you have to do anything that's in parentheses, brackets, braces, absolute value symbols, whatever, any kind of a grouping symbol, what's inside there has to happen first. After that, we need to take care of exponents. And there's a little side note, you need to simplify exponential expressions before you keep change change because sometimes it will make a difference for you. So if you see that there's subtraction in the problem and it's there's an exponential expression, just Figure out what that exponential expression is worth first, then do your keep change changing. And second to last, we have multiplication and division from left to right. And lastly, addition and subtraction from left to right. So you can kind of use that as a nice little checklist as we're working through these. But right now, it's already written in the form of an exponential expression, and I want to know how much it's worth. So we will practice typing some of these things in on a calculator so you can get well acquainted with how to do that. But for right now, um, because I don't know if this will be on your non-calculator portion or not, I'd like you to be able to do it both ways. So first off, I have the quantity of negative 2 to the fourth power. You've actually seen things like this before. And what I need you to understand is that this means I'm raising negative 2 to the fourth power. That means I have negative 2 being multiplied four times. And I just showed a bunch of parentheses around it. You can do that. You could just write negative 2 without the parentheses four times. But that base tells me... This is the factor I'm repeatedly multiplying, and this 4 tells me how many of them I have. Um, from this, you can go from left to right. You could group it. You could use your associative property and group it together. Let's use the associative property. So if I take negative 2 times negative 2, that's 4, and negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and 4 times 4, that's 16. So you should have a positive 16 for that one. All right, next one. You might think, oh, this is the exact same thing. It's not. This base is not in parentheses, right? So this means the opposite of whatever 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is. So the result of this one's always going to be negative no matter what. And we just did 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? We know that it's 16, but this time it's going to be a negative 16. So again, if you have a negative base that is not in parentheses, the result of that expression is always going to be negative. Next one, I have the quantity of negative one-third to the third power. This base is in parentheses. Actually, fractional bases will always be in parentheses because if you just had negative one-third to the third power, and I'll kind of write it up here as a side note, if you just had negative one-third to the third power like that, it's only going to raise 1 to the third power, not the 3. So when you put the parentheses around it, you're saying the numerator cubed and the denominator cubed. Cubed is a fancy way of saying to the third power, in case I lost some people. I don't think we talked about that yet, so I'm sorry by that. Um, but yeah, cubed and third power, same thing. So when you see this, the quantity of negative 1 third to the third power, this means, oops, you have negative 1 third times another negative 1 third times another negative one-third. So we're multiplying three one-thirds. Um, the first thing I would recommend you do is figure out what your sign is. And negative multiplied by another negative, that's a positive. And a positive multiplied by another negative is a negative. So I know in the end, my answer is going to be negative. Now let's just focus on the math part. Um, we can just take two at a time. So if you're just taking one-third times one-third, that's one-ninth, right? Three times three is nine. And now we have to multiply that by another one-third. Well, 1 times 1 is 1, and 9 times 3 is 27. So your final answer should be negative 1 27. All right. Next, moving along here. Okay. I don't see any parentheses. 
Um, number two, I do see some exponents, so we'll take care of that first. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 plus 2 times 4 squared, and 4 squared means 4 times 4, not 4 times 2. 4 times 4 is 16. Now from here, most people want to do 3 plus 2. You can't do that next. You have to solve multiplication before you can add. So I'm really taking 3 plus 16 times 2, which is 32. Then, now we can add 3 plus 32 is a positive 35. So you should have a positive 35 for that one. All right, next one over. Now this is um, the one I had talked about earlier, step number two, exponents. It says simplify exponents before you keep change change. It just makes it easier in the long run. So I see there's subtraction here in front of this 8 squared, but I'm going to take care of that first. All right. So 3 to the third power, 8 squared, and then I have this 2 here. I know we need to evaluate all of our exponential stuff before we can move on to the division. So 3 cubed means 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. 8 squared means 8 times 8. 8 times 8 is 64. And then I have my divided by 2. Now, all of my exponents are gone. Now I'm going to keep change change. At this point, next on my list is division. So I need to take negative 64 and divide that by 2. I know it's going to be negative because I have one of each. 2 goes into the 6 three times, 2 goes into 4 twice. And now I can go ahead and solve my addition problem using my integer rules. When I have one of each, I'm supposed to subtract the digits. So 32 minus 27 is 5. And I'm going to take the sign of the greater digit, which makes it a negative 5. Next example. It's been a while since you've seen these absolute value signs. Um, this means take the absolute value of the result of what's inside. So the first thing we need to do is take care of this exponential expression in there. So remember, this is a negative base. It's not in parentheses, so no matter what, it's going to be negative. And 3 to the third power, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27 and I'm supposed to take negative 27 divided by a positive 27. Well, any number divided by itself is 1, and a negative divided by a positive is a negative. And last but not least, I'm supposed to take the absolute value of this. So how far away from 0 is negative 1? It's 1 away. So your final answer should be 1 for that one. All right, three left. We can do it. I have 2 minus 4 times 5 squared. Before I do any keep change changing at all, let's take care of these exponents right here. I think I've gone through more pens today than I have ever gone through during one single lesson. Anyway, 2 minus 4 times 5 squared. Again, not 10. It means 5 times 5, which is 25. Now that all my exponents are gone, I'm going to keep change change. And in looking at this, I know you're so tempted. You probably just want to take that 2 plus negative 4. You can't. You need to solve all multiplication before you can add. I want to take 2 plus whatever negative 4 times 25 is, which it just so happens to be a negative 100. Right? 25 times 4 is 100. A negative times a positive is a negative. And 2 plus negative 100, I have to subtract the digits and take the sign of the greater. So you should have negative 98 as your final answer for that one. This one's quite similar to that. Again, I want to evaluate all my exponents first before I keep change change. There aren't any parentheses, so that's first on the list. 5 minus 6 squared means 6 times 6, which is 36, divided by 4. Now that all my exponents are gone, I'm going to keep change change. I have to divide before I can add, so I want to take 5 plus negative 36 divided by 4 is negative 9, and then I can subtract my digits, and take the sign of the greater for a final answer of negative 4 on that one. All right, the grand finale. So close to the end. Exciting. Okay, so I see some exponents in here. I see a subtraction sign right outside of these brackets. Let's start with what's inside here. Okay, so negative 5, I'm going to leave the subtraction sign alone. And I have this 5 squared minus 2 times 15. I'm going to take care of these exponents first inside. So 5 times 5 is 25, and that's minus 2 times 15. Now let's just focus inside right here for now. There aren't any more exponents in here, so I'm going to keep change change what's inside. I'm going to rewrite the rest of this. 
I have to multiply before I can add. So inside here, I'm really taking 25 plus, when you take a negative 2 times a positive 15, that's a negative 30. Still not done in there. <laughs> Oops. Pretend this is still a subtraction sign. When I'm writing in pen, there's nothing I can do. Um, 25 plus negative 30 is negative 5. And then I have a negative 5. This was still a subtraction sign, right? And inside here, the absolute value of negative 5. How far away is negative 5 from 0? It is 5 away. Now I'm going to keep change, change this. It's a lot easier at the end. Negative 5 plus negative 5 gives me a negative 10. All right, that one was a doozy. But if you just take it step by step, totally not so bad. Hope you enjoyed your lesson 13.1. See you later.